Okay, so Edson is noting, I wanted to share this, um, this practice because it's, it's really one that's meant so much to me as a practitioner. Um, I learned this a couple years after starting to do social noting, kind of developed this practice, you know, a year or two after you started really sharing the social noting technique. And um, this to me was a very innovative practice because it was really bringing together a lot of different elements and none of them had an exact precedent in, in the Theravada tradition, for sure. But uh, this technique, it was inspired by a Buddhist uh, or, uh, practice orientation, Homaha Mudra, in the Tibetan tradition. It was inspired by Kenneth's essentially reading about it online, on Wikipedia, just taking his experience as a contemplative practitioner, translating, as he understood it, the essence of Mahamudra. Um, and, and so originally, this was called Mahamudra noting. Um, and then we realized, you know, this is, uh, we want to respect and honor the, the kind of integrity of the traditions as well. So it makes more sense to just refer to it directly as essence noting, because that's what it's about, revealing first the essence of mind. And of course, many traditions talk about something like this, like what is, what is the essential nature of mind? or of experience of consciousness, you could say. Um, and how do we realize our essential nature, which is enlightenment or awakening? Um, well, in this practice, we realize our essential nature first by noting listening. And, and specifically, we're listening for something we're not gonna be able to hear. The way that Kenneth shared these instructions with me. He said, listen to the sound of the ships in the harbor. Listen to the sound of the ships in the harbor. Well, unless you're right next to a harbor and there's a ship outside your door and you can hear it, you're not going to hear ships in the harbor. So instead, we just, but we still listen for them. We listen for the sound of the ships in the harbor. And we note that as listening listening. Listening. Listening for something we're not going to be able to hear. Ramjan Dorje, who is the third karmapa of this line of spiritual teachers in Tibet, in his uh, Aspirational prayer for Mahamudra, he shared, it doesn't exist. Even the victorious ones haven't seen it. It is not non-existent because it is the basis of all samsara and nirvana. This is not a contradiction because this is the unity of the middle way. May we realize the true nature of mind, which is free from all limitations and extremes. And that first sentence in particular, I think is really pointing in the same direction that the listening does. It doesn't exist. Even the victorious ones haven't seen it or heard it or felt it or been able to conceptualize it. What we're looking for is not a thing. It's not an experience. It's not something. It's not going to happen in time. It's this very moment as it is. This is it. This is it. And it's the fear and it's the anxiety and it's the panic. Is This is it too. This is it. It's the uncertainty, the fundamental not knowingness. That's also it. Don't know. So we're just noting listening and we're turning toward that which we won't be able to hear or see experience because it's not an object listening (sighs) 
the second part of this instruction is when you notice a pleasant or expansive or beautiful state of mind arising in your experience. And this may very well happen as you turn toward listening. Listening. There's openness, receptivity, curiosity, wonder. All of these are pleasant, positive states of mind. The second part of this instruction, in essence noting, is you can, and are invited to and encouraged to, note the positive mind states that arise. Note your positive mind states. Know them and note them. Listening. When a positive mind state arises, note it. Joy, love, tenderness, release, releasing. The third part of this instruction, when we notice an unpleasant state of mind arise, when you notice something difficult, something unpleasant, something contractive, something egoic, you could say, that feels like a strong sense of self and maybe attachment or fixation. If you feel that kind of state of mind arising, then you can note it, you can work with it and note it in one of two ways, a binary note, releasing or allowing, releasing or allowing. With releasing, we're letting it go. We're working on just letting go. There's fear. Sometimes we can just release, releasing, letting go. Saying no, not right now. I don't need this. Or we can allow. We can just let it be. Instead of let it go, let it be. Say yes. Okay. I'm going to let this be. Allowing. In the allowing Allowing is itself a positive mind state. So this move is moving us back with releasing or allowing. We're giving ourselves a tool to work with the unpleasant, the difficult. But that's a tool that brings us right back to noticing a positive mind state. So we're simultaneously allowing, releasing. Finding that place in us that can hold the most difficult, the most unbearable, even. That, 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 that's a possibility with any state. We're, that we're working on training that capacity to, to, to recognize that. So, and then when we notice a positive mind state arise, just note that. And at any point, if you're not sure what to do, just come back to listening. Just come back to listening. What is the essential nature of mind? Listen for the sound of the stars in the sky. What do the stars sound like? Listening. Allowing. There's contraction, there's fear, I'm allowing. Letting the sensations be there. Releasing. Noticing this thought, releasing, letting it go. I don't need to follow this thought at this moment. Release. Listening. Who am I? Inquiring. That's a positive mind state. Inquiring, who am I? Listening, don't know. Not knowing, this can be experienced as an expansive state of mind, not knowing. It can be experienced as a contractive one too. I don't know. Don't know. Totally different. 